So what I'm working on today, I've got these little toroidal shapes that I'm making, semi-toroids, uh, out of brass. And I'm doing this in one setup on my machine. Um, basically, this, this is the bigger of the two sizes. They're very small. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I've got op one. Uh, these are finished op one. Um, basically cut a little more than halfway through the uh, stock here uh, to finish these up um, using a pretty small end mill. It's smaller than one millimeter, the ball end mill diameter. And the uh, uh, I'm roughing it out with the 1 16th two fluid end mill. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, we're gonna finish one side and then I've got the machine uh, program to come come over here, bring the part over here so I can uh, set it up for op two, which is, you know, still clamped in the machine and I never take this part out. So what I'm doing is I take some super glue and I uh, load this bad boy up. Oop, too much. It's hard to do with one hand while filming. So we load that guy up with super glue. Try to get a little on the edges too. So this is a, some gap filling super glue, some thick stuff. Take a little piece of scrap metal and we just stick her down there and then give it like a little whiff of accelerator just to speed up the drying process. Kind of just knock it, knock a little on the edge and it uh, propagates inside. Um, maybe a little squirt back there too. Uh, so it, it's, it basically catalyzes the super glue to start um, drying up and that spreads throughout the glue. You can actually kind of watch it turn white here as it uh, as it dries up. So we'll wait about, I don't know, a couple minutes for that to chooch and then uh, we'll go ahead and press cycle start and flip. it'll flip to the other side and machine the other side and I'll show you what happens. And here are the parts being cut. Not a lot to see here, but you can see the uh, uh, piece of stock that we glued on. Um, hanging out on the bottom there and that kind of keeps all the parts together in there. I don't think super glue by itself would be enough of a like rigid uh, backer to hold all the parts in there. So um, I faced the two sides down uh, to be fairly close. I think it's five thousandths gap between the you know the top of the the top of the surface and where the part actually is. Um, so there's about five thousandths worth of super glue between them, and then uh, yeah, it, uh, it does a great job holding the parts together. We can machine them out, and then uh, I'll show you how we separate them. And here's what the parts look like when they're done. This is another set of them. Uh, I'm not making a whole bunch of these, so I don't really um, mind not having a very fast process here with waiting for the glue to dry. But uh, yeah, they look pretty good. Let's pop them off. Yep, so I've just been putting them in my vise and, uh, well, it helps if it's actually tightened down. And I'm prying them up. So this sometimes peels them off, sometimes they get stuck on here. So, uh, you can pretty much just like peel them off of here and then we drop them in a little thing acetone. If you can't get them off the uh, scrap part, just uh, put it in acetone. It'll uh, soften up the super glue, and after a little while, you'll be able to pop them off and the uh, and clean them up a little better. Sometimes you'll still have a little sticky residue from the super glue. Um, the acetone softens it; it doesn't totally dissolve all of it, like you might think it would. So, yeah, just wipe it down with the paper towel or whatever, and get the rest of the residue off. Drop it back in and you'll have perfect little parts. Just uh, thought I'd share a little quick uh, tip on window machining using super glue as a uh, fixturing medium for small parts.